Hello, this is David Coyle, and welcome to the next video in our series, Analyzing Public Datasets, From Start to Finish, a Top Hat Alignment. In this video, we're going to take two publicly available RNA-seq datasets from an experiment on rice, go through an alignment to genomic DNA using a program called Top Hat, and then using a suite of software called Cufflinks, Cufcompare, and Cufdiff, we're going to perform an actual statistical analysis looking for differences in gene expression between these two data sets. However, this whole analysis comes with a big caveat, which is that analysis is hard. Galaxy has a succinct way of describing this. They say that there's no automatic gear shift for data analysis. It's all like stick shift driving in San Francisco. So think of this and the following videos as one path among many, but navigating this path gives you a good starting place for your own analysis of publicly available data. To begin with, let's open up Galaxy. Here I've created a history with two data sets, which are two different rice genotypes from the same experiment. So we expect to see a fair amount of difference in gene expression. Here's the first data set, and I've already run the FASTQ groomer on it. Here's the second data set, where I've also run the FASTQ groomer. And here at the top is the appropriate genomic sequence. So to begin with, we need to find Top Hat. Top Hat is over here on the left under Next Generation RNA Analysis, and it's the first option. Let's go ahead and click on Top Hat. As before, we don't want to use a built-in index. We want to use a reference genome for the alignment. So we'll click on Use One from the History, and it automatically finds the, the reference genome. Um, and let's go ahead and run this on the first data set. So this one down here, default settings are fine. Go ahead and click Execute. This time, however, I'm not just going to go away. We're going to go ahead and queue up the second Top Hat run as well. So in Galaxy, you don't have to wait for each step. You can put everything into a queue and run it at a time. So for the second one, we'll use one from the history. And this time, we'll choose the second data set. We'll click Execute. These top hat alignments are going to create two different files, splice junctions and accepted hits. We're going to work with the accepted hits file, which is in the BAM format. Um, we're also going to want to take a look using IGV, as discussed in the last videos, and to do that we'll also need a BY file. And as before, we create the BY file by editing attributes here, and convert to a new format, BAM to BY. So we'll queue that up. We also need to do the same for this data set. We'll edit attributes. BAM to buy, we'll queue that up. And we're all finished. We've finished both of the two top hat alignments and the creation of the two buy files. Right now, we're going to proceed to Cufflinks. Cufflinks is found over here in the same RNA analysis menu. And what Cufflinks will do is we'll take all of the reads and the alignment generated by Top Hat and attempt to assemble transcripts. It will also estimate transcript abundance uh, using something called FPKM or RPKM. And RPKM stands for reads per kilobase of exon model per million reads. So it takes into account transcript size and read abundance. Uh, let's click on cufflinks here. And this says it accepts a SAM or a BAM file of aligned RNA reads, which is exactly what we have. We'll click on the first data set here, and we'll go ahead and use the default parameters. One thing that should be noted is this asks if you want to use a reference annotation. And you can do that, and if you use a reference annotation, your final results will have the appropriate gene annotation information. However, this, has to, this means you have to have a reference genome in GTF format. And we don't have such a thing for rice, or we can't create such a thing without programming. So for this simple analysis, we're not going to use a reference annotation. 
click on execute and we'll let that run. We'll also go ahead and queue up cufflinks for the second alignment. And that took about 25 minutes. So we've run cufflinks now on both of the two top hat alignments. Uh, the next step is to compare these two to each other. Cufflinks produced a transcript assembly and transcript abundance information. Now we want to compare these two data sets to each other. To do that, we're going to use Cuff Compare, which is over here on the left under RNA Analysis. We click on Cuff Compare. And it asks for a GTF file produced by Cufflinks, which we have. Let's go ahead and just keep them in the right order. This is the first one, the first assembled transcripts. And then for use another GTF file, we want to say yes, because we want to compare two. And it automatically found the other one. So now we're going to compare these two Cufflinks outputs. So we'll go ahead and run Cuff Compare. That took less than 10 minutes. And this cuff compare creates a whole lot of files, which again, if you're interested in the details, you can check out the manual at the following URL. Um, we're only interested for now in this combined transcript file, which is what cuffdiff is going to use. And so cuffdiff is going to use the output of this comparison as well as the original SAM or BAM files to do a statistical analysis and look for significant differences in transcript expression. Cuffdiff is the last option here under RNA-seq analysis. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it automatically finds this file number 23, the combined transcript data. And we need to change one of these two. So now we have the first data set here from the top hat alignment and the second data set here. Uh, Cuffdiff will use the false discovery rate method. Uh, you can read about that at the following URL, um, but we'll leave it at 0.05 and we'll run the analysis. And that only took another few minutes. Cuffdiff generates a large number of files, uh, many of which are going to be non-functional because of the lack of annotation. But we're interested in this, number 26, gene expression. And we're going to go ahead and look at this in Excel because the formatting is a little strange in Galaxy. So we'll go here to 26. We'll save it to our computer and open it in Excel. To save time, I've done that already. So let's take a look. Here is the cuff diff results. And I'm going to enlarge this field a little bit because we don't have gene annotation here, but we do have positional information. And you can so that see the gene at this position had this FPKM value and this FPKM value in experiment one, experiment two, the fold change, the statistics, and a calculation of whether it's significant or not. And you can see this for all the genes. Again, this is only an example. You would want to do your own modifications to this analysis. You would want to have the gene annotation. You would have wanted to do quality trimming, etc. But this is one path that you could use to go from publicly available data to an actual statistical analysis using only publicly available tools. In the next video, we're going to take these same two data sets and look at them in more detail on IGV. Until then, thanks for watching.